As a lot of my viewers know, I am a big fan of Inventables Easel. It is a great program that lets new users learn CNC without all the technical mumbo jumbo that other products require. I believe lowering the barrier to entry to the CNC hobby is essential for letting new users learn their hobby and enjoy it with as little frustration as possible. Now, before we get going, let's start with the elephant in the room. Yes, Easel is still free for use. For anyone. Although Inventables is making it very difficult to figure this out from their sign-in page, signing up does provide access to all the basic features, and all those features are sufficient to get you going and start your CNC adventure. If you don't have an account, simply sign up to start your free 30-day trial, and from there you don't need to upgrade to a paid plan unless you need some of those advanced features. Okay, let's jump into some of the new features that Easel has that makes it more useful and more competitive with some of the other products on the market. Here we are over at Easel.com. Once you log in, this is the screen that you'll be presented with when you create a blank project. What you have on the left-hand side is the canvas where you do your design work, and on the right-hand side is a preview of what it will look like once it's cut out. Okay, the first thing that I want to cover is something that seems so mundane and ordinary. It is hard to believe the feature didn't exist until recently. And that is the ability to copy a vector from one program and paste it into Easel. Now, you could always copy vectors within Easel, but you can never paste from an outside source. Let me show you how. So here we are in Affinity Designer, and what you have in front of you is a vector that I used for a previous video. That is the Dog Paw video series that I created. So if you're interested in checking those out, I will leave a link above and below. So what we're going to go ahead and do is just select this vector right here in Affinity. I am going to right click and say copy that, and then I am going to tab back into Easel. And then we are going to go under Edit here, and we are going to select paste. Now what you will see here is what immediately pops up is a little another pop-up that says paste. This is a little weird, but I believe what is going on here is this is Easel telling the operating system to paste from the operating system's system buffer. And so because this is very much a Macintosh pop-up paste button, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to select paste here, and you will see automatically it pastes that vector directly into Easel from Affinity Designer. So this is super cool. In the past, what I would have to do is I would have to do my editing in my vector program, whether that's Affinity or Inkscape, then export that SVG, and then import it into Easel. And then if I needed to make any changes along the way, I would have to go back into the vector program, do my editing, re-import it into Easel, re-establish everything, and start the process over again. Now it is as simple as a copy and paste from the vector program into Easel. One thing to note about the pasted vector here is if the originating file is set to 96 dots per inch, then the pasted vector should be exactly the same shape and size as in your vector program. However, if your vector program is set up for 72 DPI, then you will need to scale the pasted vector up by about 25%. Some of the vector programs out there have a default of 72 DPI. Generally, I change everything to 96 because that is what is required by Fusion, and that is now what is also required by Inventables. The next new feature that I want to cover is the ability to quickly offset vectors. If you watch that dog paw video, link above and below, you will know that we had to create that offset in the vector program and then import that vector into Easel. Now we can quickly create the offset within Easel with no back and forth of exporting and importing vectors. Okay, let's, let me go ahead and show that to you here in Easel. So with the dog paw imported from the previous step, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna select it and drag it a little bit to the center. With it in the center and selected, we can now just right click on that uh, vector and we select offset and you'll get a little pop up here that says offset shape and it'll ask you for the distance you want to offset it and whether you want to offset on the outside or on the inside. In this case, and if you watched the last video, 
we learned that having an offset of 12 millimeters looked better than having an offset of six millimeters for that dog paw bowl that we created. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set it to 12 millimeters just to continue simulating what we did in that last video. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna leave it on the outside because we will ultimately wanna create that profile on the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click apply. Now there are some artifacts in the center that you will ultimately want to delete, but that's how easy it is to offset your vectors. Now one thing to note, however, is once you do that offset, there doesn't seem to be any way to edit it. What Easel does is it creates a whole new vector. So if you want to change that offset size, you need to delete that new offsetted vector and create a new one with the new size. So that's a little bit of an annoyance, but it's no big deal. And it's certainly a welcome added feature to easel overall. The next feature is closely related to the last feature of offsetting the vector, and that is the ability to move vector nodes using your keyboard. A node is a point along the vector where the curve turns or arcs in some manner. Easel node editing isn't as robust as a true vector editor, but it does allow basic editing of the vector nodes, and now it is just a little bit easier to use. All right, let's go ahead and focus in on the vector that we just imported and offset. So we have this offset vector here, and as I noted in the previous segment, there is some stuff in the middle here that was generated during the offset function, but are things that we don't necessarily want in our final design. So what do we do? Well, let's select that offset vector and then click edit points. And what you see is a myriad of bubbles pop up. These are all the nodes of the vectors. And so what we can do is we can zoom in here a little bit and I'm gonna show you the nudging capability. And so if we select one of these nodes here and we move it, you can see that it moves and snaps to the grid. Now, if you don't want the grid snap, you can see here, hold down the option key and it'll disable the grid snapping. So we will do that. We will hold it down. And you can see here that we can move it around. Now. If we wanted to move this node very precisely and we didn't want to drag and drop it, we now have the ability with the keyboard using the left, right, up, down arrow keys to move it using the keyboard. So with it selected, we can move it up, we can move it down, we can move it left, and we can move it right. Alternatively, if you hold down the shift key, then Easel is going to jump into the alternate grid, which is roughly five times bigger than the basic grid that you see on the screen here. So holding down the shift key, you can see that it moves much, much further, left, right, up, and down. And so what you can do is you can quickly use the shift key to get the node close to where you want it to be. And then you release the shift key and you can have a little finer control on it. Now, one thing to note here is that easel does not allow you to select that grid size, which is a super bummer because if you wanted to set maybe the primary grid to be something reasonable around a few millimeters, and then that secondary grid, rather than being much bigger, you can uh, use a much smaller value, then that would be really optimal because then you can really fine tune where your nodes are going relative to uh, the vector itself. Okay, so I mentioned that you can also use this feature here to um, uh, change this artifacting. And so what you can do when these nodes are selected is you can actually go ahead and you can delete them just by hitting the delete key like that. Now, when you are editing nodes here, one thing that would be really, really super nice for Inventables to add, if we click Edit Nodes here, you can see that all the nodes are now available. It would be nice if you could click and drag the nodes to highlight more than one at a time. There does not seem to be any way to highlight all of the nodes and delete a bunch of nodes at once. You need to select them individually, holding down the Shift key to do a multi-select, and then you can select and delete the nodes. Delete. So to get rid of this center artifacting that we got during that outlining operation, you're going to have to manually select every one of these nodes and delete it, which I will do for your convenience, and we'll be right back. Okay, well, that was a little painful, and so this is exactly why I say that Easel's node editing capabilities aren't terribly fantastic. 
Um, this would have been a lot easier if I could have uh, done it in my vector program. I could have just selected all the nodes and deleted them. Or something that maybe Easel and Inventables might want to consider adding is the ability to break this vector up into two separate vectors. And then I could have just selected that inner vector and deleted it. Now that you have the offsetting capability that creates multiple vectors like this one did, uh, I think having the ability to break that vector up I think would be a good thing. Either in the form of, I guess, ungrouping or literally breaking up the vector. I'm not exactly sure how it works inside of the program. The next new feature is something that is very much a convenience item, but I think it is something that makes the user experience much, much better. And that is click to pan. So in the past, the fastest way to scroll was to use the mouse wheel and holding down the shift or the option key. Shift lets you scroll left or right. An option lets you scroll up or down. And so now this is not hard, but it takes your hands off the keys you were using and requires continual repositioning. Plus, I always forget which modifier key does which operation, so I invariably try a few times to get to where I need to be. It's just annoying, but no more. Now you can just simply right click and scroll or pan left or right. So this is a super useful feature that just seems so intuitive, but it's just something that Inventables and Easel has never had in the past. Now, if we can only get the middle mouse wheel to zoom rather than scrolling, that would be truly epic. And so to zoom, you still have to hold down that option key and zoom in and zoom out but at least panning left and right and up and down is a heck of a lot easier than it used to be. The last feature that I would like to cover is not new, but it is a feature that I believe is critical and is still free within Easel. And that is the ability to download your G code from the website and use it with any machine, not just the Xcarve. I would like to commend Zach and the entire Inventables team for keeping the software open and available to such a broad audience and a broad set of machines. Aside from Easel, only Fusion remains completely free and open for use across multiple machines. However, Fusion has a much steeper learning curve and it is not nearly as beginner friendly as Easel is. Now to download your G-code, you simply select your project right here, scroll down to download G-code, and that's it. It automatically downloads your G-code. The G-code should work for just about any machine as it is very basic and is broadly adopted across many different machines. If you want to take some of these new features and create a project using Easel, then check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far, and don't forget to be inspired.